Evening, ladies and gents, Simon Brown here for this evening's webcast. So this evening, value investing the Benjamin Graham way. I don't think I've ever bitten off quite so much before. Sometimes you something seems like a great idea, and then you dig around and yowza. It's uh, challenging, probably, to say. But let's dive into it. As always, about 30 minutes. We've got time for questions and the like. We can hit the website if need be. But Benjamin Graham, the father of value investing. When you talk value investing, you talk Benjamin Graham. He is classic, what I would call deep value investing. Uh, what do I mean by deep? I mean, I'm quasi value investing. I, I like to buy good stuff when it's cheap. Benjamin Graham saying you buy great stuff when it's crazy cheap. So really, he is the, the, the father of it. He was Warren Buffett's mentor. That's what got Warren Buffett into, you know, in, 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 into investing. Uh, and I can't remember, I think it was, was it Stanford University? No, doesn't matter. Um, Warren Buffett these days, no longer a value investor. Absolutely not. And when you go through Benjamin Graham's requirements, you'll see exactly why. His his famous book is Intelligent Investor, uh, still available, first published 1949. And essentially what I've done this evening is taken two of the chapters which focus on his methodology. For, for identifying the stocks. And it's perfectly clear, it's laid out, it's simple. There is zero rocket science required. The point with it, it looks for quality, it looks for cheap, it looks for margin of safety. It doesn't look for quality in the way I would. I, I would use Porter's Five Forces. I would delve into the, the nuances of a company and the like. This is purely 100% fundamental. Now, I, I, I argue that, that fundamentals need to be, uh, what's what I'm looking for, need to be aided with story. Story is important as well. Benjamin Graham says nonsense. It's just about the numbers. It's just about the fundamentals. He then goes on and he does two stocks, uh, defensive and enterprise. And we'll go through both of them and, and, and what are his requirements. As I said, he lays it out quite clearly as to exactly what you're looking for when you're looking for a value investing, either defensive or enterprise. Defensive for his mind, the slightly lower risk. First requirement, 500 million of annual sales. He talks about 100 million that's adjusted for inflation. Of course, that's dollars. So about a 5 billion rand per year of revenue. Chunky, but a lot of companies do that in our market. Current assets, twice current liability. So pause a moment. What do we mean by current? Current means that they are realizable in the next 12 months, in the current financial year. So the current assets would be cash. Uh, it would be monies that are owed to you that are due to be paid within the next 12 months. It would be inventories, would certainly be current assets. Things such as property, plant, equipment, would not be current. And then current liabilities is uh, monies that you owe, you know, you've you've received the product or the service, but you, you've got 30 or 90 days to pay. Um, loans that are falling due at this point, so the shorter term loans and the like. So what they're looking for is your current assets, twice current liabilities. What does that mean? That's a liquidity ratio. In other words, can you quickly, if things get tight, can you, can you pay the debts and, and, and keep yourself going? You got current assets twice current liabilities. The answer is yes, that's a great liquidity ratio. Long-term debt, less than net current assets. So now he's saying, okay, hang on a second. You, you, you're covering yourself on your, on your short-term liabilities. What about your long-term debt? Can you cover that in a hurry? If your long-term debt suddenly fell due, probably wouldn't, but if it did, 10 years of positive earnings, 20 years of dividends, which in our example, and how many of the, well, there are about 400 shares, in fact, there are about 380 shares on the JSC. How many have got 20 years of history? Never mind 20 years of earnings. And short answer, not very many. So we, we might fudge that, but we'll, we'll get to that in, in, in a moment. Um, an increase of at least one third in earnings per share in the last 10 years. So uh, moving up in the right direction. What we can see here, what he's really focused on is a company that's well liquid internally, a strong balance sheet in essence, making money and paying dividends and consistently doing so. So those, nice and easy, no rocket science required there. We get that point. Uh, and there's more. 
Price earnings, less than 15 times average earnings. Now, digging around, what's he saying about average earnings? Um, and and I, 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 you know, does he mean average over a period of time? Does he mean the last years, et cetera? And in truth, it seems unclear. So I've used last year. And price, uh, one and a half times uh, the book value. Book value is your net asset value. So say your net asset value is um, uh, 10 Rand. He wants the price of the share to be 15 Rand or less. That net asset value is assets, less liabilities. In other words, the breakup value, the liquidation value of the business. And then, of course, you would d uh, divide it by number of shares to get it per share. And then as a rule of thumb, product multiplying, and I come to that, here it is there. We call it the Graham number. Assuming the company meets all of these requirements, and these are onerous requirements. So assuming the company meets them all, the question is, well, then do we buy it? And the answer is no. You run it through what is called the Graham number. The Graham number is you take 22 and a half multiplied by earnings per share, multiplied by book value per share, and the share price must be less than that. And that's an, so your, your last metric is that fall down there. So that's the theory behind it. So I thought, cool, let's go and find some shares. Let's go and find these, these value Graham shares on the JSC so we can rush out and buy them. And his last point was 10 stocks, 10% each. In other words, equal weighted, 10 shares. Okay, so I got to go and find 10 of them. Easy enough. I went and did a scan using standard online share trading. Just an, an initial scan. Got me 56 shares. Looking for uh, price and asset value, less than one and a half. Uh, PE ratio below 15 and PE above zero. Why above zero? Well, because if it's below zero, it didn't return a profit and that breaches one of the rules. Dividend yield uh, above zero. Again, we want dividend pay. So this, this is not conclusive. This did not mean 56 stocks met the requirement. It meant that 56 stocks got through the first test. And they're sort of 10 of the shares that did it. We got the Billitons, Absis, Steinhaus, uh, Barlow's Pans, a bunch of property stocks, but I kicked them out. Um, Caxton, Cap, Tongart, Lewis, TCP, uh, Transaction Capital. So there were a bunch of stocks there. And then I started to dig. So now you've got this. Now you've got to go to the next level and you've got to go and say, well, what are current assets versus current liabilities? What is revenue and the like? And I'll be honest, things started to fall apart. Billiton, revenue, 33.9 billion. Pass. Current assets, 24.9. Current liabilities, 20.1. Fail. So bulletins out the window. Okay, fine. Because uh, you've got to have current assets twice current liabilities. So next one, Barlow, revenue, pass. Current assets, 24.4. Liabilities, 15.1. Fail. Man, and it just went on and on and on. And, and you know, I, I did about 10 of them. And, and I'm going to come to the problem in a bit and a potential solution for it. Not a single one of those 56 stocks well, of the 10 or so that I did, actually passed. Mostly they fell down at current assets versus current liabilities, just two or one. So remember the, the Graham number, let's use Barlow World for the Graham number. What do you got? Headline earnings at 316 cents, NAV at 72.66, and it gives you an answer 71.99 because you take 22 and a half, multiplied by HEPS, 316, multiplied by NAV, 7266, and then you square it, and you come out, 70, call it 72 Rand, but the current Barlow share price is 100 bucks. So even if Barlow's had passed everything else, they failed that. So, I mean, what, what, I, mean I always knew, and, and I, I read Intelligent Investor for the first time probably 20 years ago, and then I read it again probably seven or eight years ago. I call it my driest book ever. You, you read it with a, with a jug of water next to you. But I'd never really applied it. And, and what became patently obvious is that, man, it's strict. And, you know, I start with 56 stocks. I kick out the properties. I've got like 40 left. I start whittling down. I have not yet found a stock. That met their requirement. I'm going to carry on going. And if I find one, I will, hey man, I will tweet it. I will take banner adverts out to tell the world. But thus far, no dice. So that's defensive. That's cool. Then he's got enterprise. So let's look at enterprise. 
So the enterprising ones, current liabilities, sorry, current assets, one and a half times current liabilities, cool. Debt, not more than 110% of net current assets. Okay, we can see what's happening here is he's giving me a, a little more wiggle room in some places. Previously, he wanted um, long-term debt should not exceed. Now he's saying it can be 10% higher than the net current assets. And previously, he said that uh, current assets should be twice current liabilities. Now he's saying one and a half times current liabilities. So he's tweaking in different places. What he's basically saying is the enterprising is your mid and small, really. Earning stability, no deficit in the last five years. In other words, they haven't made a loss in the last five years. Nice and easy. Some current dividend, and that excludes a lot of your smaller mid caps. They want a dividend in the last financial year and a price earnings under 10. Let me carry on. Earnings growth. Last year's earnings must be more than those of five years ago. Okay, fair enough. And price not more than 120% of net tangible assets and that's important previously we spoke of just nav now he's talking about tangible nav what is those those those, tan those intangibles you must remove broadly goodwill so you buy a company for a million rand but it's got six hundred thousand rand of 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 of, uh, of of hard assets that four hundred thousand difference becomes goodwill on the balance sheet so a little more onerous there and then it's 120 percent and it's TNAV. And the product of the multiplier times ratio to price book should not exceed 12. That's this formula here, whereas previously we had 22 and a half. Here we're looking for 12 times earnings per share times book value per share. So more onerous in this point here. So no sweat. He wants 20 stocks, 5% weighting of each stock. 20. By this point, I have to be honest. I didn't expect to find, I hadn't found any in defensive, never mind 10. I got to say, I was enterprised, was I going to find 20 shares? I did not expect to find, man, I yeah, did not expect to find 20. So I did myself a scan, slightly different because your numbers are a little bit different here. I get 29 shares on first screening. On defensive, I got 56. Here I get 29. And there's some of them. Gold stocks popping up. Um... SGL on both, uh, Lewis and Transaction Capital on both, BRT as well. We also get uh, uh, Value, Mustech, Santova, DOD, Equestra comes up. So cool. Let's go dig around. Goldfields, current assets, 1.1 billion. Current liability, 0 0.65 billion. Debt, 2 billion. So it passes on current assets versus current liabilities. But remember what he says there, debt not more than 110% of current assets. That debt is almost um, 180% of current assets. Goldfield fails. Okay. Value. i got to say, I thought value was going to make it. In part, I suppose, their name. Current assets, 474 million rand. Current liabilities, 451 million. Fail. Okay, Equestra, hmm. current assets 3 billion, liabilities 4.1, fail. See what's happening here, can't, I, I got to find 20 enterprising shares, I've only got a handful to play with and as fast as I check, every one I check fails, without fail, they all fail. So a couple of thoughts, and my first thought I want to make here, what it did for me, I, I, because here's the point, I haven't yet found a JSC listed stock that meets his criteria. And I haven't looked at all of them. If I strip out the property and there's some duplicates, I probably end up with maybe uh, 40 or 45 shares. And I've probably looked at half of them. And I haven't found one yet that matches. To be truthful, I don't expect to. Maybe I find one, but but that's about it. it. Tells me a couple of things. The value managers that we have in South Africa, and I huge respect for them, not dissing them in the least. The Adrian Seville's at Canon and Pete Fullen at RECM. They're not doing classic Benjamin Graham style investing. Well, we know why, hey? Eh? Because if they were, they wouldn't have any shares. But you know what it did for me? It got me thinking. It got me thinking about what to look at. It got me thinking about that relationship between current assets and current liabilities. 
And suddenly I thought, well, okay, maybe I don't want to be as onerous as Graham, but maybe this is something to, to, to bring into the equation when I'm looking for my quasi-value shares. It got me thinking about things such as your, your, your price-to-book ratios, um, your profitability, your dividend payments. So I, was it a wasted exercise? Well, no. Uh, but, you know, when, when, you, when you're discovering, and this for me was a journey of discovery, when you're discovering, it's never wasted. I mean, you discover, and even if you discover that there's no Benjamin Graham stocks on the JSC, you know, I, I, pub quiz, I'm going to win the next pub quiz that comes around. That's going to be my, 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 my $100 question. But it got me thinking, and, and that's, that's invaluable. You know, thinking is hugely invaluable, and I, we, we don't do it often enough. And, and so for me, it's really about thinking about the different components. And, and I'm going to go back to it. I, I'm off to Bloemfontein this weekend to watch the Sharks hopefully beat the Cheetahs. They are our bogey team, so hence I say hopefully. So I've got a four-hour drive either way, and I'm going to roll this around in my head. What is he looking at within the internals? And what should we be focusing on and perhaps looking at? And, and again, you know, the point, net debt. So debt, not more than 110% of, of, of net current assets. Maybe there's some stuff to integrate. And what it will mean is that my selection and purchasing criteria will be stricter. I don't have a problem with that. I don't want to restrict as Graham because then I'd be 100% cash. Well, maybe market crashes. Maybe that's when we go crazy. So the point being is, yeah, it, it got me thinking. That's always a good thing. So I couldn't find. I'm going to carry on digging. Um, but 10 defensive, 20 enterprising. My short answer, I think the JSC is too small. Or maybe, or maybe the JSC is currently too expensive. And that might be it. Maybe it's as simple as that. Maybe we need for the crash to happen or, or correction. So I'm going to run it again. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to run through all the stocks and then I'm going to wait for the correction of the crash and then we'll do that process again and let's see what comes up. I, I'm certainly not going to, at this point, walk away from Benjamin Graham and say, the man was a nutcase, this doesn't work. No, he wasn't a nutcase. He's one of the smartest investors the planet has ever seen. So I don't think we abandon it that quickly. So quick recap, very strict requirements, and it is perhaps this JSE that's too small. And easier data filtering. filtering. So I, I'm using standard online share trading, and it is a very long manual process. I do the filter, that first screen, then I've got to go into the last set of results and start pulling data and the like. Uh, Analystview.co is a website who I, I've requested a, a, a trial from them. They haven't got pricing details, but I've requested a trial. And apparently this gives you all the fundamental data and I'll be able to do some nice, easy searches and the like. So I could just set up the requirement and bang it off. And certainly if it works, then, then that makes my life a heck a lot easier in that process. Um, as I said, going to continue to hunt. If I find some, I will tweet them. As I said, I will more than tweet them. I will shout them from the rooftops because at this point in time, I'm just not winning with the finding. And it might be too small. It might be our market is too expensive. So, ladies and gents, uh, if you've got questions, throw them into me. A couple already coming in. Uh, David, do you think the stage of the bull market, the JC, is simply overpriced in value doesn't exist? Yes. I, I, I don't want to say that that's definitely the answer, but I, I, I agree with you. Certainly, I think if I had been doing this exercise in March of 2009, I think I would have had better luck. There would still be some disqualifications. I mean, for example, uh, earnings growth last year's earnings more than five years previously. And that would kick it out immediately uh, in many cases because of the crisis. But yes, I think if we'd done it in March 2009 and then repeated it in March 2010 and March 2011, I think we would have had better luck. So I do think it's a factor of JC is small and however you spin it, JC is expensive. Uh, Robert, you realize I'm not going <laughs> to... Uh, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, yes, it really shows how fragile things are. Robert, I think you... you yes, I, it, it made me ponder it too. And it made me think, well, my first response was, JC is tiny. My next response was, you know, if not one single stock so far meets requirement, 
man, we're expensive. But you know what? Sleep anyway, because the crash will happen in spite of it. And crashes are beautiful things. You know what? It's like your favorite whiny state having a sale. Beautiful things crashes. So sleep like a baby and get ready for buying. Um, uh, King, you're asking what criteria Buffett is now using. Great question. So Buffett is queued as a value investor. Certainly he was schooled under, under Benjamin Graham. He's probably quasi-value. But then you know what? Most people are quasi-value unless they're out and out momentum. So, so Buffett really is, is, is using you know, the Buffett theory. Is there What's Buffett's probably his key metric? Cash flow. I would say his key focus is absolutely going to be cash flow. Uh, Jack, same question. I would say Buffett is a cash is king. He's he certainly got some of the processes, but does he look at Benjamin Graham exclusively and use that process anymore? No, he's moved on. Uh, Jakubus, absolutely 100% pleasure. Um, Jay, you're saying some of the people looking at the JC in dollar terms say our market is not expensive. I hear what you say because as the dollar moves, um, and certainly a lot of them are buying it, I. Maybe not. I mean, maybe not. But again, if you look, if you look, let's step aside from Benjamin Graham. Um, yeah, you know, as as that rand moves, that obviously has impacts and 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 and, and changes the the, the valuations and, and the like. You know, you you buy a stock for 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 ten rand, a tenth of a dollar, it's a hundred, um, and the dollar goes against you, and 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 effectively it becomes uh, cheaper for you. I, I I hear what you're saying. But uh, I think that they're buying us for other reasons, and that's exposure to emerging markets more than anything else. Uh, Raymond, why not look at the 2009 figures to see, Raymond? I think it's a brilliant idea. I'm going to do that. I uh, hadn't thought of it until uh, yours, so 100% credit to you. I'm going to do that, um, and I'll, I'll put it out. I'll probably put it into FinWeek or something like that. Let's go back, because it's an interesting debate. It, it, it'll solve two questions for us. Firstly, is the JSC too small? Yes or no? Or maybe it's expensive. And if we go back to 2009, it could say to us, it could further add to the expensive debate. I get that 100%. Uh, how, does, how about doing 75 to 80%? If I'm, if I'm understanding, oh, Benjamin Graham, I hear what you're saying. So, so kind of sliding the numbers a bit. No, sure. I, absolutely. I mean, what I did here this evening was 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 hundred percent Benjamin Graham, and and that was the purpose. Um, can we can we and and that's what I'm saying when I say it. It got me thinking. Could we tweak some of it? Sure, absolutely, we can. Right? Warren Buffett has, and hey, it uh it it, it worked for him, so we shouldn't argue. Um, David saying, doesn't Benjamin say get out of stocks and bunker down in cash and bonds till value returns? The chase for yields has overheated most stock markets, but the time for value will return. He probably does, David. Uh, yes. He, he, I mean, would, would, would Graham be buying at this point? No. Would he be selling? I don't know. I, I'm not a big fan of selling. Um, I, you know, because I would have been selling two years ago and I would have missed crazy amounts of upside. I like to, you know, I would, yeah. So, but, but would he be, say, be hunkering down and storing cash and waiting for the value? Yes. Because you know what? The value will return. Absolutely. We're going to have a market in our future that has an average price earnings of 11 or 12 compared to the current 18 or 19. The question is, is it this week, this year, or 2020? Uh, Byron, always a pleasure. Um, ooh, Jacobus, you're asking for a list of all the books I have read. Um, we'll do, we'll do. I'll find a way to do it. I'll probably pop it in the newsletter. It's far many. Uh, I have a library of of, of 5,000 books, but but I mean, not all, of course, investment. I've got about 150 investment books. Um, I will I, I give you a couple now. We're talking investing. So one up on Wall Street. Um, there's a, a Fisher book. Um, uh, what's the Fisher book? Something about, I can't remember. Fisher, Fisher, Fisher. I can't remember the title. Absolutely great book. But the one up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch, uh, Effective Investor, by a uh, local chap, oh, sorry, my mind's gone blank. What is his name? Um, Franco, Franco, I want to call him Bassetti. Maybe that's right. Effective Investor, also a great book to, to read. Uh, Etienne, some research I done a while back saw value investors move to a simpler formula. A nice one would be to composite uh, dividend earnings, uh, earnings per share, EBITDA, uh, EV, each out of 10, composite them, rank them from high to low, invest in the top 10%. I like that. 
It certainly, I agree. the first half I agree with. Uh, some research, you know, simpler formulas. Absolutely agreed. Um, that's in essence what I've done. But I like your idea here, what you've done. Uh, uh, take a couple, decide what the important ones are. And you've put three perfectly great ones there. Um, rank them and find the top stocks that come out of it. Yeah. Uh, Graham Pepsi's criteria just to point to departures first filter, then tweet the criteria for rationality. I like that too. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is use that first filter and, and then go and, and apply some more thinking to it. Hey, and you know what we're doing here, guys and, and ladies? We're thinking, and, and that's the point I made. We're taking Benjamin Graham, who are we going to say is a, 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 you know, there are few equals in, in, in the investing world from Benjamin Graham. And we're saying, well, how can we tweak it? Now, we've got to fall into the trap. Be careful of falling into the trap that we're tweaking to find things to invest in. But it's a perfectly solid thing to say, here's a foundation. Let me think about it. Let me think how I can evolve it. Not improve it. Maybe improve it, but evolve it. So, yeah, Graham, 100%. Love it. Um, David, he would be rebalancing. Yeah. Uh, 100% constantly rebalancing. Uh, Robert, the JSC is small. No, no, we're the size of North Carolina. Um, sorry, someone's phoning me in the middle of the night. Oh, I hope that doesn't kill my connection. No, it didn't. Um, no, absolutely. We're the size of North Carolina. Um, but yes, uh, so so that's certainly an issue there. Uh, Graham, absolutely always a pleasure. Uh, uh, yeah, newsletter. I'll throw it in. So, so let me start doing that. What I'll start doing. And I can't promise it this week because I'm off to the rugby and I write my newsletter on Thursday. But let me pop in a book every newsletter. Either a book that I've read or a book that someone's read, uh, uh, book reviews and stuff. I'll start popping some books into the newsletter. Love it. Uh, just one lap newsletter. Um, extreme Money. Uh, sorry, Robert, who's that? Uh, I'm going to pronounce this name completely badly. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cheat um, and I'm going to forwarded to everybody. Uh, Extreme Money by Sanjati Das. Ah, send it to everyone. Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits and Other Writings. Fumani, you are brilliant. You are a star. It's a great book. Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits uh, by Fisher. Absolutely brilliant. Fumani, thank you. You saved my bacon there. Um, Vector Vest System, Tony, I don't know. I David Paul is running it. I have a huge amount of respect for I have not read the book. I, sorry, I have not uh, dug around the website. I have heard some good feedback from it. So I can't give much more detail than that. Uh, Yako, do civilized people still buy gold, not miners? Um, when they get married, I suppose. <laughs> I, I, as an investment case, I've never understood the investment case for gold. And I can't believe it's 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 it's... I, I don't, I, I don't, I didn't, and yes, for a long time I was wrong, but you know what, I've been right again. I was right for a while, then I was wrong for about a decade, and then I'm right again. I don't think so. Uh, when is my book coming, Graham? I saw publishers last week. We're looking for February, approximately exactly one year late. Lots of stories as to why, but we're looking at February. Uh, how are this? Uh, always a pleasure, absolutely. Uh, subtitled The Masters of the Universe and the Cult of Risk. Brilliant. Robert, I'm going to go and uh, if there's a Kindle version, I will buy it before the video has finished compiling. Uh, ladies and gents, I'm going to leave it there. Questions are running up. We are have run out rather and we are bumping up to time. We're at exactly half an hour. I'm, I'm going to finish with, with what I said. I don't think we throw Graham away. And I think, yes, we're a small market. But I also think that in 2009, we would have had much better success at finding. And I think most important, it got us thinking. And I can tell it got us thinking because it got me thinking. And I can tell from the questions coming from you guys, it got you thinking. And you know what? If we're thinking, we're winning. So I, I you know, although I spent two days thinking, man, I've bitten off more than I tried. Could, could chew. I, I made a promise that I was going to find these value stocks and we were going to buy them and be rich by Christmas. And, 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 and then I moved beyond that and thought to myself, you know what? We're smarter for it. And if we're smarter, that's always a good reason to have more wine. And if we're having more wine, then we are absolutely winning. Ladies and gents, we will leave it there. Uh, huge thanks for your time this evening. Massive thanks for the questions. I always appreciate the questions. they huge amounts of fun. I will uh, start doing some book reviews. I think that's a brilliant idea. Let's start sticking some books out there. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? 
we've got the new blog section on just one lap. We call it articles because blog sounds a little, blog sounds like I'm sitting in my pajamas and I might be drinking wine, but I'm never sitting in my pajamas. So I'm going to, we'll put it in the newsletter, but I'm gonna, I, I will do uh, once a week, probably on Fridays. I like Fridays is a good day for a book. Once a week, I will do a short little book review. Um, if you go to justonelap.com, click on articles. By next Friday, you will see a drop down that says books. And we will, let's start looking at some books. And here's the challenge to you folks. You've read a book. You loved it. You hated it. You had an opinion on it. That's what matters. Well, give me a hundred words or 500 words. Uh, drop it to me an email. Uh, and we'll publish yours. Uh, Simon at justonelap.com. Uh, let me know what your books are. Uh, Robert, I'm interested in the one that you've got, The Masters of the Universe and the Cult of Risk. You read a book. You got an opinion, good or bad. Bang me a couple of hundred words on it. And uh, we'll publish it on just one lap. Uh, everyone, all the best. Have a great evening. Cheers.